All right, guys, let's use our imagination for a moment. Let's say we can turn the temperature down to negative 110 degrees Fahrenheit. If we were to do that, all the carbon dioxide in the room would actually freeze into a solid. So every time you exhale, you'd be exhaling text, but actually dry ice, okay? When you freeze carbon dioxide gas into a solid, that's what dry ice is. So today, we are gonna play around with dry ice. So when handling dry ice, you wanna be very careful. I've got my oven mitt here. It is extremely cold. It can cause damage to the tissue in your skin. So I'm gonna also use tongs. When I use the tongs, I want you to listen very closely. So I want you to listen to dry ice and the tongs. You can hear it vibrating on the table, as well as vibrating in the tongs. I am not shaking the tongs. This is happening because the metal for, that make up the tongs is a very good conductor of energy. So what's happening is, since it's conducting heat so easily, it is rapidly making this um, evaporate into air very quickly. And it is vibrating up against the tongs in doing so. And that process of this going from a solid directly to a gas is actually called sublimation. All right, next little mini demo here for you. Uh, this one is just for fun. In bubbles. Why? Because it looks cool. And you can see the carbon dioxide. In All right, next up, um, I just want to put some of this dry ice in a Ziploc baggie for you because I want you to be able to see that process called sublimation. And it's obviously hard to see because it's going directly into a gas and you can't see that gas. So I'm going to put some dry ice or frozen CO2 into a baggie, zip it up, and we'll keep it right here on the edge of the demo table. Keep an eye on that. I'm also going to keep a couple pieces out just on the table so you can see exactly why it's called dry ice. We'll come back to that in, in a few minutes. So as you can see, the CO2 gas is starting to fill up the bag rather quickly. And as the pressure builds up inside that bag, you can probably guess what's gonna happen. So CO2 is actually a heavier gas than most of the gases around it. So the next little demo is gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about. Let's uh, dry ice into, this is just a two liter bottle. You can see the CO2 in there. And I want you to watch where the CO2 is going. You can see it pretty easily up against the black demo table. So which way is it going? Once it comes out of the bottle, does it go up? Does it go down? Does it stay level? You got a pretty obvious answer there that the CO2 gas is falling down. This is because it is heavier than most of the other gases around it. All right, so I made a little homemade balance for us. And I made this because I want you to see that CO2 does in fact have weight. Air has weight, air has mass. So I'm going to literally dump some CO2 into one side of my balance and fill up this paper bag with CO2. And you should be able to see that it does in fact have weight. Again, I am not pouring any liquid into this bag. I am simply dumping CO2 into the bag to try to get a result here. balance isn't exactly cooperating with me, but. So when things get cold, the particles kind of move a little bit closer together because they technically have some less energy in there, so they're not quite as spread apart, and they become a little bit more brittle. Um, and CO2 is nice and cold. So what I did was, 
threw some gum in here. Let's see exactly how brittle this gum is. Ready? So all I have here is simply a pan with water in it with a candle in the middle. That candle needs oxygen to complete the combustion reaction. That's why the candle is able to be lit right now because it is consuming the oxygen around it. I want to just throw some dry ice in there to get lots of CO2 around my candle. And you can predict what you think will probably happen with the candle if too much CO2 is around it. And it looks cool too. So again, you see the CO2 kind of falling and spreading across the table. Um, but the main reason why I wanted to show you this is I wanted to show you that that candle does in fact need oxygen. If you cut off its oxygen supply, it can't burn. So what happened there is too much CO2 got there uh, around it and it suffocated the flame. Um, if you were to put a whole bunch of dry ice into a very, very small room with no air circulation and you sat in that room long enough, it would eventually continue, uh, sublimation would continue to happen and there'd be too much CO2 in that room for you to breathe and you could suffocate just like the candle.